Yeah, what's up everybody, it's Tuna. In today's video, I'll take you guys through all the information you need to know about the Lightning Arrow Deadeye and what you can do to leak start it as well as Excel all the way from Act 1 into Endgame. What is the Lightning Arrow Deadeye? The Lightning Arrow Deadeye is a ranged attack based build. It's gonna be shooting Lightning Arrows through enemies that pierce and they're gonna be returning as well. And it excels at mapping, speed farming and all of that kind of stuff. The build itself is not a very tanky build, however, thanks to its defenses and its ability to stay at ranged and also, you know, shock, chill and freeze enemies, it's going to basically make the build feel pretty good both in all the softcore SSF as well as softcore trade scenarios. On top of all that, it has very high evasion as well as spell suppression so that you are actually able to have a gap in between when monsters attack you, right? So you're able to recover your HP through instant leech and life gain on hit in order you know, to stay top top and alive. Some of its strengths and weaknesses include it being a fast mapper, it's very easy to level, very easy to gear in the early game, can be played in SSF and is a ranged playstyle. However, its cons include being a poor bosser, it is not hardcore viable and on the very high end the build is very expensive because of you know certain items being sought after, for example plus two arrow bows, plus one arrow quivers, and in some situations, Hyrie's ire, that is a fairly, fairly rare item that many people are gonna, gonna get their hands on. This build excels at farming legions as well as any in-map mechanic. So if you wish to actually take on those types of content, then the Lightning Arrow leak starter is by far the best one you can choose as you'll be able to, you know, on very, very basic gear, start farming legions and you can find all of those guides here in the max roll tool and it's something that as well I'm really proud to introduce to you guys because we've been working really hard on getting this tool to you guys and I'll sort of talk you through how to work through the tool as well as you know the guide itself as we go through this build guide. So let's talk a little bit about the offensive and defensive scaling of the build. Since we are an elemental attack damage build you want to be stacking fire, lightning, and cold damage on uh, our bow as well as all of our items. We gain benefit of increased attack speed, projectile damage, attack damage, and we need accuracy in order to hit our enemies. Once we enter mid game and we are able to swap onto critical strike, we want to get as much critical strike chance and multiplier as possible, as well as you know all other generic increases that we get and frenzy charges and all that kind of good stuff. We are using auras to further amplify our damage and give us uh, you know our defenses as well. And we are using anger or haste uh, and precision you know to top up our accuracy as well as give us some critical strike chance. Additional arrows don't actually give us more damage. However, they do give us a substantial amount of clear. So getting more arrows will always be beneficial because of the way that lightning arrow works. Uh, it is going to have more clear and basically feel much, much better the more you have. In addition, projectile speed is also very helpful in that it will take less time for the arrows to travel from your character to monsters further out onto the screen and of course come back as well thanks to returning projectile so getting more of that is always going to be beneficial on top of that thanks to the bow mastery all of the increases and reductions that we have to our projectile speed are going to contribute towards our bow damage as well so you can double dip on that very efficiently for defensive scaling in the end game we are going to get up to 95 percent evasion making it very hard for monsters to hit you with attack damage and thanks to also having 100% spell suppression, we are able to mitigate the damage that we take from spells by 50%. In addition to that as well, we want to be 100% ailment immune in the, so that we can avoid shocks, uh, ignites, as well as, um, you know, chills and freezes and that kind of stuff. One thing to definitely not take for granted is the fact that you are a range build, so you are able to actually stay at range and, you know, keep monsters further away from you and kill them before they reach you, which is actually one of the best defenses in Path of Exile, believe it or not. But on top of that, you know, a life leech and life gain on hit are insane because if we do eventually get hit, if an attack gets through our evasion, you know, you're basically able to top yourself up back really, really fast. Of course, you can go look through the guide here and there's gonna be a more in-depth explanation about all of the mechanics that you need to know. And yeah, if you wish to essentially study that a little bit, I implore you to just like look in the description, check out the guide, uh, I put a lot of time into putting this together. So if you guys wish to know more, make sure you check that out. So for leveling here, you can see that we have developed a pretty crazy tool that is gonna be able to show you all the information you need to know, going from act one, level one, all the way into end game, showing you the gems that you'll need to swap to and all of the passives that you want to be grabbing 
as you progress. But let's talk a little bit through it. So let's start here by Act 1. Straight out from level 2, you will want to look for a 3 link. You don't necessarily have to have this anywhere. So if you see the little infinity symbol, that means that you can pretty much socket these gems anywhere. You'll get a 3 link and you want to look for movement speed boots as well. Iron rings are going to give you a substantial amount of damage and a rustic sash as well. Make sure to never actually skip essences early on. Because essences are, you know, you're going to be able to use them on your bow. And if you have a good bow already, then you can probably use them on your boots in case you don't have movement speed. You sort of like try to brute force getting those stats there. At level two straight up, we want to use Galvanic Arrow. You want to link that to Mirage Archer and you put it with Pierce Support. You'll have a Burning Arrow, which you pretty much picked up, you know, before killing Brutus. And you'll just keep that as a separate skill gem there. As you'll probably want to use that on, um, you know, if you have like a tankier rare or something like that you want to kill, you can pretty much hit him with a couple Burning Arrows. And then continue to attack with your Galvanic Arrow and let Mirage Archer do the work there. You will pick up a dash as soon as it's given to you and buy Sniper's Mark. That is because Sniper's Mark is going to give us a ton of damage on single target as well. So yeah, if you want to kill tank your targets, you just cast Sniper's Mark on them for more damage. War Banner is also useful. You will need to pick up some strength in early on. Um, through your pathing path later on, we'll show, um, you know, the passive skill tree as you're leveling. But yeah, you'll pick up War Banner and you just equip it and it's going to make enemies take more damage. But also on single target, you can drop that down to gain adrenaline if you wish. But if you don't want to like be clicking extra buttons, you can just basically just have it on. Monsters will take more damage. So that's pretty nice. The next step is at level four. At level four, you want to equip a Shrapnel Ballista on a three link and you'll want to continue using Sniper's Mark on tanky, tanky monsters. And as I previously mentioned, War Banner as well. I like swapping to a Frost Blink here because Frost Blink just feels much better than Dash overall. It's an instant ability. But yeah, again, you won't be able to pick this up uh, once you have a little bit of intelligence and strength. You can always look for a Lapis Amulet early in the shop as well. If you have enough currency to buy that, it'll basically take care of all your int requirements early. So that's pretty good. So yeah, you'll link your snap, uh, Shrapnel Ballista to added cold damage support and faster attacks. But you get those gems very early on. So yeah, make sure to pick those up from the shop at level four as soon as you can. Next at level eight, you will want to get Blink Arrow for more mobility. And what you want to do is you want to cast Blink Arrow into Frost Blink after once you've landed. This is just going to greatly increase your mobility as you're traveling a large distances, you know, through Act 1 to Act 2. And Blink Arrow is also going to allow you to traverse uh, longer distances where Frost Blink otherwise wouldn't. It can be useful in some certain situation, notably when you get to Merville's Cavern. It's You'll really notice it there. At this point, you want to take out a Pierce from your Galvanic Arrow and change it for added cold damage support. So uh, do that as soon as possible as well. Next at level 12, this should be after you've entered uh, Merville's Cavern. So as soon as you've entered there, you're going to be able to go back to town and pick up a Rain of Arrows. This is going to be given to you uh, by as a, as a quest reward, right? So yeah, you pick up Rain of Arrows and that's going to be linked to Mirage Archer and added cold damage. You'll continue using Shrapnel Ballista for tank your targets and everything else remains the same. So there's not much change here and you can pretty much progress to finish Act 1 and move on to Act 2. So now that we're in Act 2, things will start to get a little bit more complicated because you gain access to more gems that are useful for your build. So here you want to buy Blood Rage as soon as you can. You want to buy Herald of Thunder and equip Herald of Ice. You want to also check the vendors for bows since basically you'll be able to double your base damage just by getting a better bow base here. So definitely always check the vendors for bows. And if you still don't have movement speed boots, um, you know, check the vendor for that as well. And make sure that you're also picking up the Quicksilver Flask from the Great White Beast quest as well. Because having two Quicksilver Flasks would be really nice as, you, as you'll be able to you know, basically click one or the other. Now at level 24, you're going to check the vendors again for four links because at four, uh, this is when four links start to become more accessible and also monsters will start dropping them as well. So yeah, check the vendors for four links and you want to add additional links to your boat, your reign of arrows, right? At this point, you want to add faster attack support to your rate of arrows. This is going to feel really good because not only will you attack faster, but your Mirage Archer as well. So you'll be able to sort of like shoot once as you're traveling along and then your, rate, uh, your Mirage Archer is going to shoot a lot faster, which is really, really nice, right? And here at this point as well, you want to get Frenzy. The Frenzy gem is going to be sold to you by the vendor. So yeah, you take the Frenzy gem and you're going to want to link that to Mana Forged Arrow support as soon as possible and everything else pretty much remains the same. So now that you have access to, you know, faster attacks as well as frenzy it's going to be really nice things will start to smooth out and make sure that you're always checking the shop for you know bow upgrades and things like that killing essences and upgrading your bow as you go along as your bow is going to just like early on you're going to be able to like double triple your damage very easily just by you know doing bow upgrades it gets a lot easier later but early on make sure to stay on top of that for sure now we are not 100 sure yet 
when you'll be able to gain these ascendancies, but early on the Warden of the Magi is just insane. You'll either want to keep your boots or helmet empty of any sort of skill gems, because you'll be able to either gain 50% elemental resistances if your equipped helmet has no green sockets, or 30% movement speed if your boots have no green sockets. If you are doing the Lee mechanic as you're progressing in the campaign, this is the first node that you'll want to go for. It is insane. And then you'll want to keep both your helmet or your boots. You know, choose one or the other. It's going to, socket pressure is going to become an issue later on early. Um, you know, you can use this to your advantage. So it, it's totally up to you whether you keep both empty or just one of them. Because capping your resistance is not all that difficult. So overall, you know, I would prioritize the movement speed. as It's going to make the campaign in the early game feel much smoother. Okay, so now we're in Act 3. And Act 3 is where things start to get pretty interesting because more monsters drop more four links and four links become a lot more prevalent, you know, uh, in the vendors and stuff like that. So yeah, this is where we can sort of start guaranteeing finding a four link. So yeah, definitely check that for sure. You'll want to kill General Gravicious because he's going to give you access to Artillery Ballista and Artillery Ballista is a ton of damage early on. And also in the end game, we'll basically be using this gem all the way into end game. Your four link for that is going to be Artillery Ballista, linked to added cold damage support, faster attacks and elemental damage with attack skills. And then the remainder of your links stay the same. But also as you are progressing here, you'll want to pick up either Anger or Haste. This is up to you. Anger is going to give you more damage. Uh, however, Haste is going to make you go faster. So depending on whether you feel like you're lacking damage or if you want speed, you can pick one or the other. Anger is definitely just a huge damage boost in comparison to Haste, but you know, some people might have a good bow or something like that and they don't need more damage so that you can just pick up haste there instead and at this point you are able to ascend and when you do ascend you want to be getting gathering wins but do not rush that i generally ascend as soon as i'm entering into act four you can uh, choose when you want to do that but just keep in mind that your first ascendancy is going to be gathering wins here gathering wins is it's really really good this is when it, your build is going to start feeling insane so definitely uh pick that up first as you can see here now we're getting to level 40 there's going to be a lot longer gaps between because uh, the early acts is when most of the changes come in, like when we can pick up most of our skill gems to boost our early game. But then from there, we've sort of solidified what our character is going to look like progressing all the way to maps. Keep in mind that, of course, like you might not have the exact same links and things like that. So you can always, you know, take some skill gems out or add some skill gems in depending on uh, what colors and what links you can facilitate. At level 40, you want to keep checking vendors for four links and upgrading your gear, keeping up with your resistances, keep your bow upgraded. And the next step would also be to ascend and get a long shot. A long shot is going to be uh, a substantial amount of damage. And this is when you are kind of wanting to start thinking about your positioning because long shot gives you a ton more damage, uh, depending on how distant you are from the target you're trying to kill. Now at level 68 or a little bit before even this is when you should be finishing the campaign and is when you want to ascend to endless munition, which gives you two additional projectiles. And this is when I like to swap to lightning arrow because at this point you will have enough projectiles to where lightning arrow feels good you know in combination with the projectiles you have on the tree as well as enemy munition it's gonna have a total of five projectiles and you'll feel pretty nice just swapping the lightning arrow that way your links will be lightning arrow linked to mirage archer added cold damage and trinity support at this point trinity support might be a tricky one depending on what type of damage you have on your bow um so if your trinity is not procking so if you see at the top left of your screen the bars are not all fully lit up you can just swap that to elemental damage with attack skills for now until you have more balanced sort of numbers of um you know flat damage and you can read a little bit more about Trinity and how it works in the max roll guide. So yeah, definitely check that out if you are curious. And for your artillery ballista, you'll maintain the same link. So that's artillery linked to added cold, faster attacks and elemental damage with attack skills. And much of the same things, yeah, you know, you're keeping here. You're going to be using a dread banner here because dread banner gives you a substantial amount of, you know, it's like basically a huge evasion boost. It's going to make it so nearby monsters are less likely to hit you. So it's going to feel very nice. And as you have like enough mana to reserve all that, it's no problem whatsoever. Definitely pick that up. And also on top of that, we get access to mark on hit and sniper's mark. So you want to link mark on hit to sniper's mark to fully automate all that stuff. Now at level 75, this is when you really want to try to get to five link as soon as possible. And you want to tr start finalizing your links as you are getting into sort of, you know, maybe yellow maps or you're progressing through your white maps and stuff like that. If you can get access to a five link, that would be great. And your fifth link is going to be returning projectiles. Returning projectiles is huge. It's going to give you a substantial sort of um, DPS boost as well as a little bit of a clear boost. 
Essentially, you want to have that as your five link and you're going to be finalizing your links as you see here on screen. You'll want to also uh, equip a guard skill. So that's a mortal call link to cast when damage taken and make sure those are, uh, you know, re relatively low level. I like to keep them around level five. Yeah. And then we'll have uh, Frenzy linked to Mana Forged Arrow and Calling Strike. We'll swap the Flame Dash as well. You can also keep Flame Dash at level one. You do not necessarily have to level this as it has a very high intelligence requirement. So if you are lacking intelligence, you know, keep it, keep it lower level. You know, you're not forced to actually level that up. So don't worry about that. Now that we are getting further into the game, we're level 85. You'll want to get a six link and you'll want to swap the critical strike as soon as possible. So the way that you're able to swap the critical strike is you'll get a bone base or um, ivory base, you know, because they have a higher base critical strike chance as well as a high attack speed. So you want to have those bow bases. And as soon as you have a bow base, you know, with a decent amount of elemental damage as well as a critical strike chance you can swap the critical strike and there's going to be the critical strikes variant on the tree uh, on the maxwell guide as well as the path of building so check that out and as soon as you get that you know swap the crit and get get all the items you need and you'll basically notice that your damage is doubled at that point it's really really good you'll want to make that swap as soon as possible all right so now that you guys know that how to level through the campaign make sure that you go here to the leveling tab as you'll have access to basically everything you need to know what passive skills you need to grab at what level and all that kind of stuff, as well as a bunch of tips and tricks that you can follow, including a filter, campaign guide, or just any other things that you need to know. The first thing I would do here is I would close the tips and trips, as long as I've sort of like read through them. And you will notice that if you move this bar here to the right, you can follow along and it will tell you exactly when you get your gems, uh, where you want to acquire them and stuff like that. So that's going to update as you go along. You know, it's going to tell you, oh, you need to get it in this act and where. And also on top of that, it's going to update my uh, passive skill tree. So you want to make sure that you are on the leveling variant of the tree here at the top and you want to scroll through. So you can see that the first nodes that we want to grab are going to be aspect of the eagle. That is because we're going to get a ton of damage by equipping that, um, by allocating that. And then next, we want to move towards primal spirit and rush precise technique. So we'll do that up until we are level 13, as you can, 14, as you can see here. So once we have precise technique, we want to have we want to move towards graceful assault. Graceful assault is going to be giving us onslaught on kill and onslaught is going to be giving us 20 percent attack speed and 20 percent movement speed, which is going to make the early game feel very, very smooth. You know, and we'll basically be keeping that all the way into end game because having Onslaught is just way too good. It's a great buff to have. So now at level 20, we will want to grab the Bow Mastery here for 100, 100 flat accuracy per green socket on your equipped bow. And since early on your, uh, green, your bow is gonna have all green sockets, this is gonna give us enough accuracy to feed into the precise technique for a while, and you won't have to worry about accuracy whatsoever. So grab that as soon as possible. And then we'll go through and we'll grab a bunch of life. It is totally up to you whether you grab this life before or after. And you can also grab thick skin too if you feel like you are a little bit low on the life pool. I prefer to just, you know, basically grab this life and then rush a little bit of damage because these damage nodes are pretty big, but it's totally up to you. You know, this is not like, it's not like written in stone. You can basically just freely grab life nodes if you need them, especially since we will grab these a little later anyways. We move towards level 30 here and by level 30, we will go for the acuity, which is going to give us additional accuracy feeding into our precise technique. But most importantly, we will want to grab this mastery here, which gives us hits, have a 25% chance to treat enemy monster resistance as averted. It's really important because imagine one in every four hits is going to treat monster resistances as the opposite of what they are. So imagine a monster has 40% resistance, it's going to treat it as negative 40 instead. This is a huge damage boost. This is going to contribute to about 20% of your total damage, even in endgame. Massive, you want to equip that early and have that as soon as possible. And then on top of that, primeval force is really nice because we are not yet critical strike chance. So having this 20% chance to inflict ailments is going to make sure that we chill and we also, on top of that, shock enemies, making them take increased damage, which is a huge damage boost in the early game and in the end game as well. Now we will move towards higher levels and we will fill out some life as well as some movement speed early, which is really, really nice for us to progress. And at this point, level 35, you'll see that I'll be grabbing some nodes to connect here because we want to be doing a small respec. So but by this point, you will have some respec points. You can see here that I am picking some nodes and then refunding some nodes to basically have a um, better efficiency on the passive skill tree as we want to grab other nodes that are connected to these. But since we wanted a rush precise technique, we had to path that way. You'll see a small respec here and you want to follow along with that. And then you want to make sure that you grab the 50 flat life mastery as soon as possible. 
because that is going to give you um, you know a lot of life early on. The re relative amount of life becomes smaller later on, but early on, 50 fly life is quite a lot. So yeah, you can grab that earlier as well if you'd like. And as we progress here, we will grab these top nodes, giving us additional accuracy, some movement speed, as well as some attack speed with bows. And then we will move towards Force of Nature, which gives us a ton more damage here. So you want to grab Force of Nature and more life evasion nodes. And at this point is when I like to grab additional projectiles as well as pierce because we are making our way towards lining arrow and with lining arrow requiring more projectiles and pierce, um, you know, you want to grab those before you swap to lightning arrow. And you can see here that we are still rain of arrows. And as soon as I grab the pierce as well as additional projectiles and my last ascendancy as I scroll towards here, endless munition, that is when we swap to lightning arrow. And at this point, we're also grabbing life leech here and the instant leech that's for mana and life leech. So at this point, you do not need a mana flask anymore. At, uh, up until this point, we were gaining mana on hit because of Primeval Spirit. But now we don't need a mana flask anymore, so we can complete, we can drop that. It is no problem at all anymore. You drop your mana flask and you grab the leech as well as some life here, which is going to give you some life gain on kill. And at level 70, we pretty much uh, finish out where we need to be after the campaign so that is going to work towards charisma at this point then you want to move onto the progression tab of the tool and that is when we click here and this is where your uh your you know your entry to end game is going to start i am not going to iterate everything that is written in the guide i'm mostly just going to go through all of the key points that you need to keep in mind and also show you guys how to use this tool because it's pretty damn insane uh the things we've we've done with this tool i'm, I'm really impressed and really happy with it so if at any point you ever want to check the passive tree you can click this here and you can you can see that it's set to early game but as you progress through the milestones you want to go to mid game uh, which is when you swap the critical strike chance and late game and remember that you can always you know if you're if you are a lower level you can always use these arrows to to sort of take some points away to see what you would do at what level you know it, it prioritizes um, certain nodes that you want to have at certain levels so yeah early mid and late is what you want to swap to uh depending on the milestones you're at so let's just close that and it's gonna get, it's gonna take us through basically everything that you need to do in the, uh in the early game like equipping your weapon talking about what weapon you need what you can do as well is you can tick that and it's gonna show up here on this um uh, display of equipment and as you go through you can basically click all of these and um yeah you'll you'll have like sort of an update of what your character should look like at this point as long as you are keeping up with you know keeping these milestones completed here in the early game you're basically just equipping um for precise technique and you're just grabbing a bunch of rare items to cap your resistance it's going to show you some of the uh, you know basically some of the items that you want to have to, to to cap out your resistance and all that kind of good stuff but once we move into mid game this is when you want to make the critical strike swap so it talks a little bit about what type of bow you want to look like uh you want to look for for, for the critical swipes uh, strike swap that is going to be the bone bow the ivory bow or the spine bow check that off once you have that you can see here and then you'll at this point want to unspec precise technique it's very important you do that but yeah you'll want to simultaneously you know once you get your bow also switch to high reach truth because high reach truth is going to give you a high level precision as well as a ton of critical strike multiplier giving you a ton of damage and then you'll want to also anoint that with any of these or you can also keep it anointed with uh, the previous anointment that we had oh so, yeah and also shadows and dust at this point is a is a great item to pick up because it's going to give you rampage but also it synergizes with the fact that you are now critical strike so yeah critical critical strike chance and critical strike multiplier so once you pick this up make sure you tick these and we move along and at this point also since you now have high reach truth you no longer really need accuracy on any of your gear so you kind of want to re um reevaluate your accuracy you know you won't be needing any at all since uh it gives you so much high risk truth and you also respect some of those accuracy nodes on your tree you make sure you uh you look at your accuracy again as you probably won't need any at this point and we're just going through and upgrading everything by this point spell suppression needs to be capped spell suppression is insane it's going to give you so much defense you want to have that uh capped as soon as possible getting a six uh six link rare body armor is pretty important at this point so depending on how rich you are you know you, you might have a high reach truth already so you can instantly just skip and buy a high reach truth but if not you can always buy either a corrupted six link or a rare six link and basically just have that there it's really important to have a six link is just going to give you substantially more damage so grab that as soon as possible and we're just going through equipping our quiver our rings and making sure that all of our gear has eldritch implicits because eldritch implicits you know they just give you a ton of extra power for very cheap you know you if you're in t14 maps and you start dropping lesser eldritch embers and lesser eldritch 
Ickers. Just throw them on your gear. You're just gonna get free upgrades for, for basically nothing. You can also just sell them if you want and buy the bases themselves as people will start actually uh, posting them. But I, I prefer to actually put implicits on my gear rather than buy the bases since it's probably much easier to get a decent implicit than it is to craft an item. So and by this point, you are done with mid game. So you can swap from the mid game to the late game tree. And this is when things start to get pretty expensive. I'm not sure exactly where you guys would be at uh, in terms of time in your progression, but this is when you start getting to the big boy upgrades, right? Your big bow, uh, you know, your Trinity, uh, your Trinity Trialy bow with critical strike chance and a ton of flat damage. We're going to be equipping that and it's going to look something like this. You know, it's pretty insane. And then we're going to talk you through, um, you know, how to craft a plus one arrow quiver. We're going to equip that there. And yeah, all of the big boy upgrades here at the end, they're coming along. If you want to know more about these milestones and what to look forward to in the early, the mid and the late game, everything is detailed there. And of course, if you have any questions, you can always drop by my stream uh, at twitch.tv forward slash crouching underscore tuna or my discord and you can ask the questions away there however make sure that you are checking this tab here for frequently asked questions as there might be some things that uh, are already explained and it'll also give you links to the lightning arrow endgame build guide as well as the tornado shot guide here that you can look forward to once you have finished all the milestones in this build guide and that pretty much sums up how to use the tool what to look forward to when playing this build and all the good stuff. So this build is just basically insane at doing any mapping content. I love this build. I played it for, you know, two leagues. I've league really started it like four times in those two leagues because of, you know, doing private leagues and that kind of stuff. It's my favorite league starter. Um, I think it's going to get nerfed next league, but who knows? So enjoy it for this league. I hope this video was helpful, guys. And if you want to know even more, more in-depth stuff about this build, I have still have a build guide video from last league um, that you can check out. I'm going to be releasing sort of uh, update um, update videos regarding how to swap to Tornado Shot, when to do that, and all that kind of stuff as well. So look out for those, and I hope you guys have found this video helpful, and I hope to catch you guys around soon again. I appreciate you. Have a good one, boys.